Oh, listen, you guys, just when you think you have seen it all, here comes Dad Demix trying to make this beer versus the Transformer beef about Nicki Minaj. I'm like, academics, your obsession with this woman is absolutely insane. And uh, we're going to be talking about the Doja Cat 14 year old later that I discovered. And uh, we're also going to be discussing about this entire situation with uh, Bongo 2, yeah, the horse's henchman, Lil Juju out there thinking that he can actually cancel Eminem. Oh my God, the delusion, you guys. Hello, tea lovers, and welcome to the tea plug. I trust you guys are doing well, and I trust you are doing great. Personally, I am doing great, you guys. I am doing extremely amazing. And uh, without further ado, let us dive straight into today's tea. Uh, first of all, we are going to talk about Dad Demix, all right? So Dad Demix was basically giving commentary on the, you know, spiraling video that the Transformer had about Bia, where she was out there threatening to sue Bia if she ever released that district, okay? Now, you would think that at least this man has mm -hmm. some, some sort of integrity to see the beef as it is, but oh well, it seems like he decided to prioritize his obsession with Nicki Minaj over comments on the actual issue at hand okay because tell me why dad demix was out there saying that oh well um you know this situation honestly i don't know why bia would have an issue with the transformer oh my god why would i don't think bia should have an issue with the transformer and do you see the hypocrisy in that so no female rapper should have issues with the transformer but all female rappers should have issues with Nicki minaj that's basically what he's trying to insinuate oh my god you guys, like, this is why I always go for Nicki Minaj a hundred times harder. Because you guys, the lake of shame in these men is insane to me. Oh, you have no reason beefing with the Transformer. But, oh, well, everybody has a reason to, like, everybody is justified for beefing with Nicki Minaj. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then he also went ahead to say that, oh, well, to a regular layman person like me, because I don't have the ins and outs of the, you know, of this beef of the. And I'm just like, since when did you become, um, you know, a re regular person in this entire industry? Like, since when did that happen? OK, since when are you commenting from a regular person perspective when you're the same person who likes to come to us? OK, saying that, oh, well, I've got inside information on that all the industry is saying all the industry is saying. And here you're coming in this beef trying to act like, oh, my goodness, trying to act dance, like trying to be blonde. Like, be serious, okay? He said, well, to a regular person like me, it looks like Bia is being Nicki Minaj's lip dog in this entire situation. And I'm like, no, this is absolutely nothing to do with Nicki Minaj academics. And the fact that you're sitting there giving commentary on something that you're claiming you don't have an idea of is insane to me. Because if you had any idea of the happenings around this entire situation, if you had any idea of what the beef is about, you would know better than to sit on there with your big back self and embarrass yourself. Like, come on. Because this entire situation started from the Transformers seemingly copying Bia's music. This is where everything emanated from, okay? Not only did she copy Bia's music, but, well, she seemingly copied her first too. Tell me who wouldn't be annoyed if somebody were to come out here looking like you. That is creepy. Oh, my God. Like, if somebody is literally morphing into you, that's creepy. And the fact that you guys like to give this girl a pass for nonsense like this will all, will forever be insane to me okay let me explain to you dad demix and the rest of you who like to act like oh my goodness it's sneaky man's fault leave that woman alone okay she's out in paris there on a sold out tour like world tour i'm sorry i i forgot to mention the world but like the i almost left out the world uh you know tour part no the world is definitely important because there's levels to this stuff okay <laughs> that being said okay the issue is the transformers tall bia's face allegedly number two it seems like well i don't know who is stealing whose ideas but somebody is stealing somebody else's ideas okay because when you listen to that entire missy elliott sample song from the transformer the beginning part of it does sound like one of bia's songs okay and then she goes ahead to sample the you know the same beat that bia sampled on yet another song so it seems like it's like a mashup of bia's creativity in two different songs you know, basically consolidated in one song of the Transformers. So this is why Bia feels some type of way about 
this entire situation and told me how Nicki Minaj has anything to do with this. Oh my God. The lake of shame, you guys, the shamelessness is insane to me. Academics, do better, okay? Do better at least, okay? If you're going to be advocating for this is and true hip-hop culture, keep the same energy. Oh my God, I'm just going to insert the snippet of that Demix trying to justify, um, you know, the Transformer coming at beer saying, oh, well, it's corny. It would never be respected. Well, I'm waiting to hear what he has to say now that beer actually did the district, okay? Okay, I don't know what your issue is with Cardi B. This, okay, I don't know what your issue is with Cardi B. I'm gonna be honest with with you though. It comes across to the regular person like me who don't know the ins and out. I know I'm a, I know I'm a media personality and I'm into rap and rap beef, but I really don't know the really like the minute details between you and Cardi. Okay, to me, I'm gonna just take this from a macro perspective. It comes across like you're being one of Nicki Minaj's soldier, and that's always gonna be lame. Okay, that's just the reality of this. Okay, I hope being the rest of them, including JT and the rest of them, bro, like being a uh, Nicki Minaj crash dummy is retarded. Like, bro, we're in 2024. Yo, I, I, I want to tell everybody who loves Nicki. And by the way, I, I would even say this to, to, to um, what's her name? Ice Spice, but everybody know. Uh, uh, I hear the new thing. Ice Spice and, 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 and Nicki beefing right now. Y'all ain't know that? Yeah, they don't get along. Yo, this is what I'm saying. Like, yo, Nikki's great, but like, nobody gets along with Nikki for too long. Well, there you had what Dad Demix had to say. So I cannot wait to hear what these people have to say about the Transformer not getting into the booth, okay? Because for how long are you going to keep on making excuses for this girl? All right. I did see some people saying, well, the Transformer does not like to to be to write about it. She likes to fight, and I'm like, well, if she likes to fight, she should go with the Christian Rocks and the Natalie Nance. That's where she belongs. This is rap territory, and if it's rap territory. Put it in the booth. If it's a red beef, put it in the booth. Bo you know, in the booth. If you want to come out, you're claiming to be the best rapper and things like that. You know, the eat girl rapper and things like that. Do what rappers do. Right. Okay. If you want to fight, if you want to go physical in the streets, there are boxing tournaments. There is the bad girls club. You can join those. Okay. You can join those. Okay. And fight with the, with the, what's her name? This one. Rollis. Fight with those people. And you see, and if you will see, we'll never ever talk about her. Like if she decides to go there, the problem comes when you guys try to put this girl on a pedestal. But when it's time to deliver, you make all sorts of excuses for her. It does not make any sense. Okay. And the fact that you guys are out there acting like it's normal for people to record calls is always insane to me. Like, oh my God, recording another person's phone call. And having the audacity to come out here saying receipts, receipts. Re That's why she will never be taken seriously as an A-lister. Who does that? Who does that? And now I'm thinking all oh, these girlies that are flocking around her and showing her fake love and things like that. Maybe they know that they were recorded. Maybe she's the one who actually told Lottery Ticket to go out there and record Nicki Minaj. And now Lottery Ticket is still right at the floor. Oh my God, what a disgusting human being. And you guys sit down there trying to excuse this toxic behavior. Would you be comfortable with people recording you all the time that you're talking to them? If you're venting to your friend, okay? I'm not saying these girls should not, um, you know, gossip about who they want to gossip about. But imagine calling somebody, you're calling a friend and they are recording you the entire time. This is insane, you guys, because for those girls to feel comfortable to talk to her about that, it means she also was saying something, okay? And she also was making the environment comfortable, do you understand? For them to say something. And then this is what she does, and you guys want to act like she's not obsessed. Because what she calls receipts are phone calls, recorded phone calls of girls talking about Nicki Minaj. Those are the receipts that she has. The obsession, oh my God, she must be so sad. Anyway, you guys, let me know in the comment section what you think about that. It seems like Chad Data was doing what it does best. Each time the Transformer is supposed to actually do what female rappers are supposed to do, they start pay posting, you know, her payola achievements and things like that. And I saw those posts and I was like, give it up, okay? This is not 2019. This is not 2020. This is not the panorama era, okay? Give it up, okay? As long as this girl does not come out here and say with a chest that she wrote an entire district, we don't care about her, okay? 
as long as there are any credits on there, but then she might not put credits. She might have a, like have writers as, as ghosts, okay? And uh, the next thing that we're going to be talking about, you guys, we're going to be talking about Lil Juju. Uh, you know, the, uh, the Bongo Tooth um, Hunchman, okay? It seems like the, you know, Juju the Huncher was out there trying to cancel Eminem over that, um, you know, Bongo Two line, um, you know, when he was like, well, would that be if I ask her for collaboration and things like that? And you do know that they have tried to launch a sympathy campaign for Bongo Two against Eminem and people really paid it dust and called them out. They were like, you know what? You can say all you want to say about every other person but Eminem keeps the same energy this has got absolutely nothing to do with Bongo 2 being a black woman and things like that stop it because listen stop it stop trying to paint this girl as a victim every single time okay if she has the audacity to be using Mariah Carey's diss to Eminem in a track she should also have the guts okay to actually take it when people mention her you know in their tracks like w which one do you want to be do you want to be the victim do you want to be the villain villain who exactly do you want to be okay so it seems like this delusional hunter uh said this about Eminem and I'm like this is what I don't understand where does all this delusion come from you guys where are are these people buying this delusion because I need it okay so he said I've never put an Eminem album into my ears ever I'm from the south we don't bump that ish down here <laughs> that people will cancel Eminem because of the of, of of Bongo 2 is insane to me. Like he's very delusional. And you do know that one thing about Twitter people is they do not forget, okay? Because a couple of uh, days ago actually, um a couple of months ago, I'm sorry, that's 512, right? Um he was out there actually talking about um you know Eminem's uh you know songs, okay? And he was like, "Well, Eminem called his mom way worse and things like that sort of like justifying what Park uh song Dear Mama uh, basically implied." And so people People were like, oh, well, you say you don't listen to Eminem, but you sure know that, well, he did, you know, talk about his mom. So, like, what's what's tea? All right. And so, yeah, it's 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 very insane to me, you guys. So people started pulling out the receipts, okay? And people were like, listen, look at even Spotify monthly listeners. Like, it's Eminem get, gets, like, I don't know, more than thrice the amount of you, of, um, you know, Spotify monthly listeners than uh, this girl does, Bongo 2. And I'm like, who do they think they are fooling? When did this girl become such a mega star? Like... <laughs> <laughs> what do these record labels tell these people oh my god okay and then another person said can we leave eminem in 2009 he's a 60 year old yt woman making fun of a 29 year old black woman's trauma this is so anti using uh getting that as a bar for cloud is a low blow when megan strikes back don't cry who is the better who's gonna cry Who's going to cry? Like, who is going to cry about a Megan district? Okay? Because the last time I checked, she's the one who does the crying. Like, who's going <laughs> to... Are you insane? Are you mad? Okay? And then she put, like, a, a quiz. And she was like, who's the better rapper? Okay? And there were 1,600... 1,062 votes. And 97% of the people voted Eminem. And... 2.9% voted Megan the Stallion. <laughs> the embarrassment, you guys. Why do they keep setting up this girl? Like, why do they do that? Okay? They want to make her this relevant, massive, mega superstar. And it's just not working. Because it's just not real. Okay? Can they not learn from the Transformers record label? Okay? If it's not real, it does not last. Okay? You will keep on losing a lot of money for nothing for absolutely nothing okay <laughs> the next thing that we are going to be talking about you guys i have been meaning to talk about this but well you know it has been in eventful in the female rap streets okay it does seem like um you know rihanna has four new diamond singles okay work needed me umbrella and yeah congratulations to um you know rihanna for basically um getting that because well it is actually also being reported that she's the most diamond single 
singles uh, she has the most diamond singles for a female artist and she also has the most diamond certified titles for a female artist congratulations to rihanna for that okay and uh the next thing that we are going to be talking about you guys we're going to be talking about jetavia okay jetavia had the entire crowd insane okay like they were literally singing her songs word for word bar for bar and i love this for her i love this for her i love the fact that people actually do know her lyrics like that people are actually messing with the music like that okay like it's not easy to have an entire arena sing out um you know to your songs okay i don't care what academics was out there trying to shade her and say that all jt performing in the gardens and things like that and stuff like that i respect her for starting right at the bottom i respect her for being not prideful um to basically start from the ground okay i respect her for that i will forever respect her for that and i know you guys like to say oh well until she beefs with Nicki minaj and things like that and i totally get what you're saying but as for me i do respect her work ethic and i think that the other reason why i like bia also is the fact that well you know she does not overuse you know her relationship with Nicki Minaj for marketing she doesn't overdo it i think i even commented that when they met for the super freaky girl thing um you know when they performed together with Nicki Minaj at a show okay i even say that well bia is one person who's cool with Nicki Minaj but is not out there overdoing it okay and y'all were like oh when the receipts come out and she was talking about Nicki Minaj and things like that and oh my god and i'm like mm -hmm, we'll talk about that when we get there okay right now we're talking about who had the guts to get into the studio and and put out a diss track <laughs> the next thing that we are going to be talking about you guys we're going to be talking about ah oh, lottery ticket they actually well she has a remix of her song sunday service with um bongo too i'm just like what's the point of having a remix to is that not a three month old song <laughs> sunday service so yeah she has bongo 2 on that song and i guess they also performed together last night at, at bongo 2's show and you know when bongo 2 was singing a verse lottery ticket was looking confused like it was like she didn't even know the lyrics and i'm like oh my god what is going on and of course there are people like oh we love how they genuinely support each other they are genuinely there for each other don't have, they don't have issues with each other and i'm like of course they are bonding over one common enemy okay before this well we didn't see a lot of them actually hanging out together like that but after they fell out with Nicki minaj of course they had to come with this entire female rap unity kumbaya they need each other we can't say the same for Nicki Minaj. That's why she does not go out of her way to fake friendships with people. If she's messing with you, she's truly messing with you. If she's not, she's not, okay? Because she knows she can sell by herself. But we, you, we can't say the same for a lot of girls. So, of course, if you know that, well, uh, portraying this image is going to make you sell more, of course, you act like, you know, you're the best of friends and things like that, Okay. Uh, the next thing that we are going to be talking about, Doja Cat, you guys, there is a um, letter that I came across on the TL, on the South African TL, and it really did break my heart, you guys. You know, Doja annoys me with the shenanigans. I remember I was even talking about, uh, you know, how she was out there cussing out her dad and things like that. But uh, this letter really broke my heart heart i'm not even gonna lie to you like it got me so emotional and so it is basically from a south african um you know celebrity okay kaya so basically um kaya was out there back in the day i think that was in 2010 and um so he wrote this about doja Cat, um and he said i cried when i read this email i received the saddest email on youtube just now a kid in new york i believe he was in Mbongeni Ngema's, um, you know, Sarafina. The kid was born 14 years ago. The, his dad was in New York on Broadway 14 years ago. She has never see, seen him. If you know of a Dumisani Tlamini who was in Sarafina 14 years ago, please don't hesitate to mail me kayav at gmail.com. I will post the girl's email as it is. This has nothing to do with this video. I'm Amala Amala Lamini, and my dad's name is Dumisani Lamini. I'm 14 and I haven't met him yet. I only have pictures. He has no Facebook or messaging source. He was in Sarafina and he performed on the Lion King in New York City 
on Broadway. I just want to find him. And there's so many Slaminis on Facebook. I don't even know if they are related to me. It said, I just want to talk to my daddy. And this was from Doja Get You Guys. I'm sorry. This is just making me so emotional. Um, It's just making me so emotional. Um, Imagine a 14-year-old girl um, writing something about that in somebody's YouTube comment section. This is just sad, you guys. And I think I understand uh, when she's out there sometimes spiraling on her dead and things like that because this has to be heartbreaking, okay? It's one thing to say, oh, my dad used to live in this town, you know? I don't know him, but to say that your dad is from another country and as a child to go on social media um, platforms and try and look up your surname and it's a foreign country that you've never been to and if you know south africa it's very true there's a lot of laminis these are common surnames and oh my god it's it just got me so emotional and um and so um kaya then said i would like to believe this is legit if not um, then I'm very slow, but I choose to believe to be slow if that is the risk I'm taking to help this kid. Let's help her, please, okay? And this was Doja Kid, you guys, at 410, looking for her dad this way, okay? So, um, I I don't know, but, like, it, it, it really got me, um, you know, so emotional. So, yeah, I just thought maybe I should share with you in case you guys see Doja doing those things sometimes bringing up her dad this way uh because you would like to imagine that at 14 if you then meet your dad you would expect him to at least step up and if, if he doesn't exactly do that obviously it will continue haunting and hurting you um yeah i'm sorry i just had to tell you about this i came across it on um you know south african twitter and it just got my attention okay and uh, the last thing that i'm gonna be talking about harley bailey you guys it does seem like there are rumors that while well, she might actually be um you know in the michael jackson biopic and so people are there saying that well some people who were actually casted in there are out there following her so people are speculating that she might actually be playing the young janet jackson so yeah let me know in the comment section you guys what you think about that if this indeed is true i'm super happy for her i'm very proud of her i mean i love harley okay yeah let me know in the comment section what you think about that Thank you very much, you guys, for watching. And thank you very much for making it this far. If you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button and do turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified each and every time that I post. And um, until my next one, see you.